Okay, so welcome to a tutorial on setting up Pool. So Pool is a digital signal processing environment for Max MSP. Um, it's a versatile, fully compatible toolkit. <laughs> uh, so Pool is just like a really cool um, uh, uh, sort of modular environment um, for Max, if you don't know what it is. And I have some demos of Pool on my YouTube channel. Um, I use it a lot for like granular synthesis, um, which uh, Pool does like very well in my opinion. Um, it's also just visually beautiful. Um, it can be interfaced in many ways via like MIDI um, or CV. Uh, they make it very versatile um, in that way. And um, yeah, it's like Max. Um, all the objects in Pool are built in Max MSP. So pool is just like a fun sort of thing that I like, um, but you know all that. Um, so this tutorial is mainly to get um, setting up, get get set up with pool, um, setting it up on your computer, and getting sound out of pool. Um, I want to do some more tutorials on the individual objects in pool as well, um, as well as interfacing it with like MIDI controllers or or MIDI, um, I'm going to be using the version in Max that is um, uh, Max for Live um, Max. So I don't own Max, but I own Ableton Suite, so I can open Max and use it and save patches in it through Ableton. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So maybe some of you that are doing that will um, sort of understand how to do it that way. Uh, this is the pool website. Um, I'm going to click on download. We're going to probably go to the GitHub, and then we probably want to open the Discord later too to find pool axe or pool patches. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, yeah, so download. Um, so first, um, we're going to need to download these external things or in order for pool to work. So pool was made by a community... Um, of max users so they use all these externals um to make the pool objects so in order for certain objects to work you might need some of these externals um so let's do that first i'm going to open ableton so that i can open max through ableton i'm just going to open max audio effect and open the patcher for the audio effect which will open max for me and then I'm just going to minimize that or X out of it. Um, so we're in Max. Um, make a new patcher. And then here are your packages, your package manager. Um, and here is where you're going to download these externals, these external packages. So I already have them all downloaded, but you would go in the search and do CN mat. You'd click on it and you'd click install. And that'll install the package. Um, some of these other ones like... I see ST, or sorry, let me go back a few pages. We'll show that, and then you can um, download it there. Um, so do that for all of these here. Um, and then we're going to use the development um, pool download. So click on somewhere around here. I guess it means to be here, but that'll take you to the GitHub. And you're gonna download this zip file, which I already have downloaded, but I'll do it for demonstration purposes. It's called pool main. And then you're gonna open um, your desktop or open your documents. Find max eight under here um, you're going to go to packages and then you're going to drag this pool main into the packages folder so pool main's already there because I have it installed but that will add that to um, your external packages that way um, so pools there I'm going to close our documents and I would restart max at this point um, and then uh, so that comes with a bunch of pool um, acts or or modules, I guess, that people have created. Um, there's also the Discord 
Oh my goodness. Cars without roofs. They try to trick us here with the AI car that kind of looks like it has a roof. But it kind of doesn't look like it has a roof at the same time. So this is the pool discord. Um, it has um, various things. Uh, I guess the one thing that I would open that I open this to to be useful for is the um, act share. So this is uh, where people will share their own acts. Um, and then one act that I downloaded from here was Groover. Um, looking for and then here's the zip file um <clears throat> so when you download acts from other people online uh it'll just be a max patch and then it's useful to make a folder on your desktop um pull acts and then add this to that folder uh, and then we're going to reference that folder in pool once we open it. Um, here's another page, uh, pool contributions. Um, and this will have a bunch of more acts that are not available in the pool library. So I'm going to download this zip as well. Um, and this has a bunch of max patches for things that... Um, um, just other objects that people use. Uh, some of them might not work because they, it's a very DIY community. Um, so some things have crashed Max before. Okay, so I have my pool axe folder, and I have the pool contributions folder that I just downloaded. I'm just going to download. I'm gonna, we're going to try this a couple ways, but I'm just going to download this. I'm going to put this whole folder in here, uh, making this pool axe folder so that when we open pool, we can add a folder for pool to search for. Um, so we can search where the acts are that we're looking for. Um, and let's just try that for now. Um, so pool axe is our folder that we have acts that aren't included in the original pool. We're going to close this new patcher and um, opening pool. Um, go to max, uh, go to extras, and then go to pool host. So this is pool's host. This is the thing you need to open in order to use pool. Um, there's a CPU, um, and then all of these uh, individual objects will have a menu for them. Um, you can see the sub patch, um, which is like how um, the audio or how the max patch was made. Um, you can really dive in there if you want to see how every patch was made. Um, and there's also info, uh, which will show you what um, what each thing does. And you can take you can pause the video and take a look at this to know more about the specific object. Um, for now, all that we need to know is that our audio status is set to what we want it to be set to. I think. This is right. This was working before. Um, and then this turns our audio on, which is the same as in um, your audio status here. This on button does the same thing. Um, yeah. Then your axe is, um, these are the list of different um, modules or axe in pool. And then here are the community contributions and unshared acts. So un for unshared acts, you want to choose a folder. And I have, I had a folder before that was just pool acts. Um, I'm going to choose this new pool acts folder um, and see if they show up under acts. So only Groover showing up. So I think we do want to uh, sort of extract the pool axe from that folder just into the main pool axe folder. So now all of our max patches are just in the pool axe folder, but it still has um, the contributions folder in it if it needs to reference it. So 
Now we're going to do this again. Let's go to X. Um, and now all of our acts are showing up. Um, and we can just choose that folder again so it knows. Pull X. Open. Now we have a list of all of our acts. Um, so these are the added ones under community contributions. Um, yeah, so now you have uh, most of the acts that are made. If you want to go through the Discord um, to find more or just talk to the community, ask questions, uh, be more involved that way, you can also do that. Um, yeah, so getting sound out of pool. Um, and I can go sort of in depth and talk about some modules too um, as I feel like it. Um, I might separate this into two two two, two tutorials, two tutorials, um, two tutorials that way. Um, but getting sound out, let's look at sinus first. Um, sinus is a sine wave generator um, with a built-in envelope, and then um, this envelope can loop. Uh, so. Basically, most modules will be set up in a way where there are presets. Um, you save a preset by um, clicking on one of these boxes, um, and you set a preset by clicking on a blank box. So let's say I have a, a different envelope over here in different timing. Uh, I save that one. And if I go back to this one, it'll be their first setting, their second setting. I guess it doesn't save the time in the preset, but it will save the envelope. We'll save the frequency in the preset. So let's say I change the frequency and the time in the envelope again. And I make uh, another preset. So this one will change the frequency. So it saves frequency information um, and timing. Uh, but it doesn't save the the sort of global timing of this, but we do want to hear this, so uh, we're going to turn on loop and trigger it, um, and then bring up our volume here, and bring up our volume here, and turn our volume on also. And then I can make these envelopes I can just delete these uh, by holding shift and clicking on these. So now we have an envelope that's looping. And this is our main sort of timing for that looping. And then this is our, um, so that's what I was talking about with the, with the uh, slew over here, by the way. If I make this a um, thousand, which is one second, fades in for a second, fades out for a second. If I make this zero, it's instantaneous. Um... So, yeah, here's your frequency. Yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, and then we can talk about rooting. Um, let's talk about uh, routing. So here you can go to, um, let's add something else or acts, add a reverb. Uh, the reverb I like, there's one from the community contributions, um, uh, herb, which is a, a copy of the herb verb, which is cool. And there's also G verb over here, which I like. Now, if I want to route the sine wave to my reverb, I would go to uh, here, right under mix, where it says no, and then I click G verb. Um, and then this reverb 
defaults to mono. So these are your channels down here. Um, I'm not really sure the difference between this channel and this channel. Here I want to set the number of output channels to uh, the Gverb 2 because I want it to be stereo. So I'm just going to click where that one was uh, and type in 2 and hit enter. I'm going to re-click Gverb and then in zero will mean it'll go to both one and two input of the, of a module. Um, so you don't have to do them manually. So I'm going to do in zero, which is both. Um, now this is your volume of the main thing. And then if you send mix, um, now we're not hearing at all because it's only sending to the reverb. Let's not bring the reverb up. You should be able to hear the reverb. And then you can mix your original signal back in. And that's your reverb time, you like the tail. Then another thing we can do, another thing we can do in routing is bring the, um, do a filter. So a few filters in here, there's X filter and there's wrap filter. Um, there's some other, I'm sure there are, are other filters I haven't really explored too much, but um, we bring up X filter and then we want the reverb to go into the filter maybe. So we can do, um, X filter under that mix in zero mix that all the way and then bring up our volume for the filter and you can do a high frequency and a low frequency sweep I'm going to turn the Q down which is just resonance of the filter um, I like, there are different, um, curves for the filter and then different filters. The band stop or notch filter sounds really nice in my opinion. And you can hear that it's kind of clicky. Um, if you hit safer over here, it turns to risky and then it gets rid of that clickiness. And then another useful thing to do is talk about the modulator. So... If I go here and go to modulator, this is sort of the thing that will um, help you control all these parameters um, in various ways. So if I go to um, the modulator, which looks complicated, I think it's designed pretty complicated in my opinion too. Um, Instead of having the high frequency be its own and low frequency be its own, I'm going to click link here. I choose a width that I like for the notch and then hit link. So now these are, are linked together. It is a bit better. Okay, so. Okay, so let's say we want to modulate this high frequency. Um, on our modulator here, we want to get the largest of um, whatever thing we're modulating. So I'm going to put this filter to the top and we see that it's 20,000. Um, I'm going to go to uh, modulator. Down here is where we're sending, um, or it's like uh, where we're sending our modulation. Um, and up here is a bunch of different waveforms. I'm going to choose sign for now. Um, and loop will loop that sine wave up and down. I'm going to send this to X filter and I'm going to send it to the filter frequency. So frequency high is the one we're controlling and they're linked. So it doesn't, shouldn't really matter, but this is the one that has all the range. So I'm choosing for like frequency high. I'm going to go to the top and then go to our large slider or our top slider and click get, and that'll make that top one. 2000 
and then we want our low one to be zero. So it'll be like the full range of zero to 2000. Um, and then we can do on. And now the sine wave is modulating that top frequency. And if you sort of focus or look at the way um, it's modulating it, it gets a, a lot faster over here and a lot slower over here. And that's because the curve of the our modulation signal um, sort of depends on the number that it's modulating and how it's modulating it. Um, and this is different for various different parameters, but a way to fix this is to use LG or the log logarithm on the curve. Uh, if I turn this up a little bit, this will be a much smoother sine wave. Still could use maybe a little more. So with the log at five, yeah, now we get a sort of consistent sine wave across it. And this may be um, clearer with something like a saw. So you want this to sort of just be a smooth curve and not be faster in one direction or at one end. And then this is your frequency for your modulator. Also might be clipping because I'm recording, but um, there are ways to avoid that. It's also kind of in the character of pool. Um, let's close our modulator for now. And let's talk about kind of granular um, and buffers and recording buffers. If we go to modulator, um, so it'll tell you the last thing that you opened um, where the ax should be. So if I go to ax, this should be, this was ax when I opened it. If I open this now and I go to um, something like Groover, I go to Groover and you see that buffer host has opened. So what buffer host is, is a place for you to put your samples. So Uh, it'll load my sample, uh, and you always want to hit on new when you're putting a new sample in or else it'll replace the sample. So if I'm, I'm on here and I add another sample, um, it will replace that sample. If I go into new, if it's on new and I add a sample, then it'll add that sample to the pool, the buffer pool. Then the way Groover works is you can add these samples here and it will play them. This is a, this is a particularly good set of samples for this. So that's Groover, which is pretty cool. Um, kind of randomizes the pitch of the samples and when they're playing. Um, there's no tempo control over it, but I think it's pretty cool. Um, and I got that from GitHub. Uh, shout out to that guy. So, um, Axe, uh, what else do we want to do? I want to talk about buffers. So if I go to Buffub, um, this is sort of recording buffers. Um, 
So to make a new buffer um, that we're going to record into, we want to hit um, here, right under uh, where it shows us our waveform, and click Sample Buffers. And then creating a new buffer, um, you want to set the number of channels of the buffer. So just do one, because uh, I'm going to use my mic for the buffer, and it's mono. But if you're doing a stereo sort of buffer, you would do two here. I'm going to make this um, five seconds long. Or add zeros until it's five seconds. Create. And this is our new buffer here. And then buff up works in a way that you choose here your um, your buffer that you just created. Okay, sick. <laughs> <laughs> or however many seconds you want. Uh, we're going to choose our buffer here. Make sure our audio status is on. Um, now we need to open um, in. So we get our input from in multi. Um, and that should be our input. Uh, uh, uh. So you're seeing our input come in here. Um, hopefully uh, this is still recording. Uh, okay, so we have our input coming in. Um, and we want the output to go to buff up one, which it does automatically. Um, but this is how you would root your output from the input. Um, nothing's coming on channel two, so it doesn't matter. And we can like not link them and turn channel two down. Um, link, uh, if you have two channels, it'll, it'll show two sliders for left and right, and you can choose whether or not you want to link them or unlink them. Uh, loop will continuously record into the buffer when you hit record. Um, so if it gets to the five seconds, it'll just keep recording on top of it. Uh, and then, yeah, so this will show you your waveform. You can zoom in using these objects and get the right angle to see your input. Um, if you hit record, you should see it. And then here we go. So this slider here, you need to kind of adjust. You see our buffer coming in. This is our recording. It's recording over and over again. Uh, I'm going to record something and stop it. Um, that seems a lot shorter than five seconds. Way shorter than five seconds, actually. Um, we have our audio. Uh, and then we can use this audio somewhere. So let's uh, open up a granular sort of thing that we can go over. Or let's open up. Let's open up plop, flop. So flop is a simple uh, sample player looper thing. Um, we're going to choose our buffer that we record into, which is SB0. Our audio comes up down here. We can use command to zoom into it. We can use option to scrub through it and control to sort of select a portion of it. Um, so I'm going to do command, zoom into that portion that we selected, which is probably just me saying something. Um, and then we're going to loop it, or I guess it is on loop already. Um, And we're going to hit on. Words, 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 Start. 
Okay, I'm gonna find out where the end of our start is. So like all the way over here at like a thousand. So we're gonna do find start here and then do get, and it'll show us that value. And do arms. Can add another modulator and maybe modulate the loop length if that's an option. Choose our longest length and then hit get. Do another sine wave. And do on. Do random. This is your pitch slider. If I had cut it off at some point, uh, thank you for watching. Um, yeah, I don't want this tutorial to be super in depth because I could probably just make a few tutorials. Um, so for this first tutorial, um, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, like and subscribe. I'll be doing more of these. I look crazy because the green screen, the, I'm getting like, transparencies with my hair and stuff anyway hopefully hopefully this worked um and yeah i'll see you guys in another tutorial feedback is uh greatly welcome and appreciated um and if you're looking to do specific things in pool please comment in like what you're trying to do and i can look into it um because i love learning about this program so yeah thank you for watching